I'm good at some, some things. I know. I make a great grip. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. Jackie. That's Jackie. And this is the Concept Crucible podcast. And, uh, boy, man, after last time, how can we top... How can we talk the topic that we talked about last time Jackie was on the show? How can you top sex? Yeah. With romance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wine, dine, chocolate, or however you define it. Yeah, I think that's that's how you're going to top it. <laughs> Let's stop talking about that lusty <laughs> stuff that we're teaching our children. Oh. Oh. But, yeah, so today we're here to talk about romance because it's kind of interesting when you think about it, like... Everybody has a concept of romance, but when you start to ask questions or to try to probe it out of people, you find that there's a lot of varying ideas of what it is and like mm-hmm. what counts for romance or what elements make up romance. So it seems like a seems like a good topic to maybe explore a little bit. First we have an icebreaker. Well you do have an icebreaker, yeah. Jackie, mm-hmm. who is your first celebrity crush? First celebrity crush. Yeah. Talking well, about crushes in the last one, we're talking about crushes in this one. It's so my first real crush I remember having on someone who was in my TV was uh, Mark from G Force. Was G Force? So like this little cartoon where they were like birds, not like Voltron where it kind of all went together, but they did kind of fly. There was, was a ship. Was Mark a cartoon person? He was a cartoon. That's amazing. <laughs> I was surprised you didn't catch on to that until. I had no idea. Did you know that Mark and Jason and Keop and no Battle of the Planets. So that was the first time I kind of remember thinking <laughs> little feels for a, a fictional character. But then, like, real life see person, uh, River Phoenix, I guess. I had a framed picture of nice. her. And then he died. He's young Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. All the feels. Wait, from from um, The Last Crusade? That was... He no, was... no. You know, oh, from the, from from the, the, TV, from the show. TV show. Young okay. Indiana Jones. I was going to say, I didn't think he was the, the young... The young Indiana Jones in the last No, he was crusade. also in Sneakers. I loved him in Sneakers. Yeah. Actually, two out of the three of my crushes that were on my teenage bedroom walls are dead. That's tragic. And the third is a really right-wing Christian fanatic. Can't win them all, I guess. <laughs> that no. kind of... But he really batting likes... Batting a thousand he, there. He really likes the banana example with, like, evolution. <laughs> and it just fits. It does. <laughs> oh, my... Right, we're not doing that show. We're not doing that show right now. We're doing this show. So go, Ryan. That's what you get for bananas. Um, go. So mine might sound weird. I um, it's not so much the celebrity. It was a character that the celebrity played that I had the huge crush on, and that was um, Anne Hathaway's portrayal of Mia Thermopolis in the Princess Diaries. I've never seen the Princess Diaries, so I don't understand. Much like I didn't understand Jackie's reference, what the hell you're talking about? <laughs> it was a Disney movie from the start of this, no, I guess it'd be the last decade now, because we're in 2015. I meant to say century, the start of this century. Um, just a Disney movie, you know, uh, based on a book, um, live action Julie movie. Andrews. Julie Andrews. Oh, nice. Uh, nice. You, know, you know what, I also have a bit of a, a crush on Julie Andrews, because she's she super elegant, no matter if she's, you know... Uh, a governess or a queen of a fictional uh, nation of <laughs> Genovia, um, but I watched Legit. I watched the shit out of that movie, <laughs> like just it's like where the tape. Well, it was a DVD thing. Oh, okay, so. yeah, so, no, 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 wrong yeah. century, wrong <laughs> century, Jackie. No, 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 no. I, I just I, I I watched it and I and I would watch it with the commentary on. And <laughs> so like when, the last time I watched it with Sarah on Netflix, I would like point out stuff that I had learned from the commentary. She's like, "How do you know so much about this movie? <laughs> no reason, no reason." But it was just I I had a really big crush on the character. Like mm-hmm. Anne Hathaway, of course, is a beautiful person, but for some reason it was I was less interested in the actress or the physical person embodying it and I was more in love with the character you know so it hasn't carried on through then like her other movies and such um you're like oh Anne Hathaway's new movie well she she was in the Princess Diaries too and I liked her I liked her in some of her recent stuff but um she was in the but no it's really it's that character yeah it was it was really the character you know it's um and then the next time but they're like I guess like an actress that I did follow through would would be um Kate Beckinsale Mm. you know I I liked her but no for first celebrity crush less the celebrity and more the character that's turn of the century too like that's you were you were you were like 
reasonably old at that point. Like you were, well, you were in your you're in your late teens at that at that point. Yeah, so I would have been. So, uh, so you, like you were at an age where you could like responsibly consider it. Yeah, <laughs> and be like, all right, I see the appeal of this person. All right, what about you? Um, I think I was seven, maybe eight, and it was Jordan Knight from the New Kids on the Block. I fucking love the New Kids on the Block. To this day, I have no idea why. Um, but yeah, Jordan. Jordan was my dude. He was my favorite. New I had kid. like, is and I didn't. My favorite new kid. Yeah, yeah. Jackie. Jackie has, uh, has hung out with him. Mm-hmm. Had wine spilled on her. By him. Basically, just stomped. he even said, "Oh, I'm sorry." Was that? Yeah, him? basically, just stomped all over all my childhood dreams. <laughs> There is a YouTube video of me dancing with him, actually. Awesome. We're linking to that <laughs> over Ryan's face. <laughs> you know what? You're gonna. The story gets even better because he was at uh, Blistem, Canada. He came. You're gonna break my heart. And they do costume karaoke, or they used to every year costume karaoke. So Jordan came to our party, which was a karaoke party. He got up on stage and he actually did a new kid song, karaoke. <laughs> For those of you. <laughs> On the audio version, <laughs> I'm crying a little. <laughs> I asked the, the karaoke <laughs> jock if uh, that had ever happened before, and he's like, "No." <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It was it was a weird it was it was a thing. I, I don't I didn't really understand what crushes meant um, at that age. But I, looking back on it, I definitely totally had a super crush on him, um, which is probably weird. I'm fine with that. Uh, th- Quick witty deflection. What's romance? What do you define as romance? That was I'm I'm super good today. That <laughs> segues. Sorry, Jackie <laughs> broke my heart a minute ago. I'm taking a second to recover, Ryan. Sorry, I, I just ended up thinking about who my first like male celebrity crush was. It was Gerard Butler in Three Hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No shame there. Just Gerard Butler, King Leonidas, Three Hundred. Yeah, so <laughs> I think Molly Ringwald was my first same-sex crush. The little lip yeah. biting, the yeah. lip biting. Oh she yeah, does that yeah. And the poofy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But anyway, what is what is what is romance? What do we define as romance oh. in life, as opposed to romance in media? Uh-huh. Really, yeah. it's not an easy thing. It's really mm-hmm. difficult. Because... I don't, well, romance, I think, like you kind of alluded to that at the beginning when you talked about chocolate and roses, and that's kind of the thing I think that pops to mind when we mm-hmm. when we talk about romance. It's yeah. that kind of um, show of love, maybe okay. a little bit. That kind of extra stuff. It's not the expected. It's the kind yeah. of the extra on top of the everyday. But it's, uh, the other thing for, I just realized right now, I don't know why it didn't come up in the, the pre-show, is I have a gendered conception of romance. Mm. Not not like, like not that I think it should be the way, it's just when I think of how a man expresses romance, it's different from how I think of... like So like when I think of romance, I think, you know, giving chocolates or giving roses or uh, Romeo scaling a tower as mm-hmm. opposed to... When I think of romance for, a, well, not what a woman experiences with romance, but I think of it in terms of the traditional, like, more gendered, almost like passive. Have you considered so, yeah, the she's, notion she's that you receiving... might be a Disney prince? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> None of them have beards. So we do have that gendered kind of thought of it, right? Except for yeah. Chewbacca. <laughs> He's not a Disney prince. He is now. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Forgot. I keep forgetting. Maybe I keep... Blocking it blocking out. Blocking it out that Disney and Star Wars... Um, but yeah, we I think there is that concept that romance is that gendered ones doing the actions and ones receiving. Yeah, almost like that traditional uh, medieval guide of courtship. Yeah. Um, uh, but then when I think of romance, like when I try to think uh, it, of it outside of that, I I have a hard time coming up with an answer because I tend to oscillate between like romance as not a noun or a verb or whatever, but romance as concept romance as a feeling romance as a set of of actions romance as you know a, a state of a relationship so uh, yeah it's, it's really hard to to pin it down but i like just to try to maybe frame it all together or bring it back together 
Jim, you had a really good metaphor of bread and cake. <laughs> yes, in the pre-show, the, the cake bread duality, and I like <laughs> I like it because we're we're already talking about the differences between how it's portrayed in the media or how it's portrayed in the popular consciousness, the bigger concept, as opposed yeah. to the lived experience of romance or how it interacts with us in our day to day life. And I thought your cake and bread metaphor <laughs> was was really interesting. So perhaps. Jim, what's the cake? Thing? The cake bread duality. Yeah, um, I believe I explained it once as as you can eat cake and cake is delicious, um, and in the same way that the the romantic moments, ro- feats of romance, are like cake. You know, what, what's what, an example of a feat of romance would be something like scaling a tower to do something. Often, marriage proposals take the form of feats of romance. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're those sudden shocks where you're like, oh shit, yeah, I love this person. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, and, 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 and they don't just resonate for, you know, the people involved in the romance, but often for people outside of it who, who they, it sort of encapsulates their conception of romance. Uh, the, oh, that's so romantic. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the best marriage proposal I ever read was in a comic book, uh, Sam and Mystery Theater. It was, it was this gruff, no nonsense cop. And he's just like, listen, you want to get married or what? She was like, yeah. Yeah, I think I do. He's like, cool. I got to go do this thing and then we'll come back and we'll figure it out. <laughs> but, and that was that, your, that's your they, and they didn't, they didn't have They didn't have a wedding or anything. He wasn't even a, a, the main character of the book. It was just, it was the final issue. And... <laughs> And he's, she's just like, let's go to dinner. He's like, we've been going to dinner for. Do you look? Do you just want to get married? And it was because it was so casual. It was. It, it felt like such a safe question for. It Did to you ask. see the one of the guy recently that took pictures every day for a, every day for a year without links her, in the had, show notes without his girlfriend knowing? That's a little weird, but at the same time, I'd, no, I, I I sort of admire hear. it. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Um, I, yeah, I have two feelings of this. First of all, it's a little stocky. Like it, it seems a little creepy. I I I'm to to quote another uh, to quote a wizard. <laughs> um, Merlin in Once and Future King he talks to Arthur once about love, and he says, "One day I'm going to fall in love with Nimu, who is the Lady of the Lake." And he's like, "Then, at some point in the future, she is going to." push me in a hole and roll a big rock in front of it and I will be trapped there forever. And Arthur is like, you know that. And Arthur Merlin's like, yup. He's like, why, Merlin, would you would you let her do that? Because you know it's, that's stupid. You're, it's, why would you do that? And Merlin's like, well, I'm going to be in love. And people do foolish things when they're in love. I mean, that's the part of the delight about it is that romance is the sort of permissibility to do foolish things mm-hmm. in the name of love. What is it from, from Taming of the Shrew? Or... More recently, ten things I hate about you. Sacrifice your dignity on the altar of love. Yes, yeah, I do. I do like the idea that the guy took a year mm-hmm. and like purposefully and like, did this every day to put this whole compilation together to do the final yeah. proposal. Rom- romance is maybe a license to to like the the, the notion of cake in in, <laughs> in romance is is a license to do foolish things to make people we love happy. Mm-hmm. And, and that is maybe... But you cannot have cake all the time. Anyone who is a grown-up realizes that... You go through that phase in college where you're like, yeah, I can just eat cake all day. And then at some point you're like, oh, God. Oh, I can't. No. No more cake. No more. And sometimes you've had a bite and sometimes you've had a piece and sometimes you've had, I don't know, seven pieces. Sometimes you just stopped counting after six. Sometimes you went back to the store for a second cake. Sometimes you went back to the store for a second cake. But bread is the opposite of that. They're not the opposite, but bread is a sort of companion. Bread is warm. You can totally eat bread every day. You can have different kinds of bread. It comes in all kinds of variety varieties. You can make your own. You can buy it at the store. You can buy it at bakeries. I mean, I'm really just now talking about bread because bread <laughs> is fucking delicious. But the point is that bread is the everyday stuff. The stuff that I mean, sustains you. Yeah. Bread to me is... And, and, and I don't know. Most of the, 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 my, the romance I desire is is bread romance, partly because I have a really <laughs> weird conception of cake romance that really never, ever turns out well. I, like, when I get foolish, I get really, really foolish in a way that becomes hard for other human beings to identify. Um, it's like, why why did you think this was a good idea? I'm like, listen, just... just I, I painted a mustache on this octopus for you. 
That never That's happened. really hard. That never happened. It is really hard. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. That would be like, wow. This just in, Jackie and I are in love. Look at all this effort you went <laughs> yeah, but, to do this thing but for But no, me. but bread is, bread is the like... The octopus consent would be my question. I don't know. I didn't really use an octopus. <laughs> I just need an example. No, bread is, bread is falling, is, is taking naps in a heap. Um, you know, bread is, is that moment when you flop into someone's lap after a hard day. <laughs> it is, it, like, it is, it's all those things in between. So is bread, like, the comfort and the... Sure. That whole... It's not, I mean, it's a pretty fluid analogy. I mean, everybody's sort of going to have their own conception of what that means. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the, the neat thing about it is everybody can sort of acknowledge the, a distinction between cake and bread. Do you think sometimes that romance masks the fact that there's not really bread there? Maybe. I, I don't know enough. I, like, as, a, as a person, I don't know enough about romance. I sort of, I have all these conceptions of it. I mean, I, I'm not quoting my own experience, not even with the octopus thing. Um, <laughs> I'm, I mean, no, I'm, I'm quoting wizards and things I have read and things like, like that. Is, that is the majority of my conception and, and framing of romance comes from that and reading texts on the philosophy of love. So, I mean, take that for what it will, but it, what it will, but it seems like everybody I've talked to about the, the cake bread duality, which is now the name for it, <laughs> can go, oh yeah. Like there are the things, there are the cool things that you, that you do, like driving out in a rainstorm into the country and feeding each other strawberries in the car. And, but you know that you don't do that every day. Surprising someone at the airport. Yeah. Like, like as and opposed. And almost missing that person because they went out a different door. <laughs> It's the voice of experience. <laughs> That's so sweet. But but yeah, as as opposed to you know the every the everyday stuff that that makes it happen. I mean, yeah, you can't you can't just have cake. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you sometimes you want to, like, but it seems as I think as you get older, you realize that that's sort of a juvenile conception of romance. Like the the notion that it's it, it is going to be princesses and towers all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, because. It is not. You have jobs and lives and sometimes kids and, you know, responsibilities. I mean, no cake is also not very good. Well, and romance might be the partner that doesn't necessarily do laundry very often doing all the laundry. Also the voice of experience? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, no, just those, those little things that, that we can show that we really appreciate the other person. Yeah. I think a lot of romance is just, hey, I'm thinking of you, and I did this thing to kind of put my thinks into something tangible. Yeah. So, yeah, I, romance, I think, like, media romance is just kind of showy. Mm -hmm. right? Media romance terrifies me. Well, the portrayals of what romance is in the media is scary. I think it's very unhealthy in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean... In the sense of it, it 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 paints things as as you know rewarding persistence, mm -hmm. and you know or or alternately uh, blaming people who who don't desire a relationship, mm -hmm. uh, or or things like that. Like it, it it presents people as heroes and and sort of goals, heroes and objects and, and things like that. I mean. The, the notion of, of romance and relationships essentially is partnership. If it's not that, then you don't really have anything. I think a lot of times, too, we equate romance with what you feel when your relationship is new. Mm -hmm. Right? So new relationship energy is a scientific thing that happens to your brain when you're newly in love with someone or with someone. It doesn't even have to be love. Like, it could be... Is you're with someone and they're making you feel these feels yep. and there's things that are firing off in your brain and we're doing all these crazy things or these sorry these uh, these things mm -hmm. that you wouldn't normally do mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, so I think we kind of think where is the romance gone yeah when that kind of peters out of the passion yeah, right? yeah. Or what does it all mean right I don't feel this mm -hmm. these strong feels anymore it's it's because of this this thing that we now know of, of this new relationship energy it lasts six months to two years, right? Anywhere. And it does fizzle out. So like, maybe you were able to kind of binge on all the cake for that time because <laughs> of all this energy you had and all this passion. You wanted to do all these things. And then you're full of cake and you're like, oh. 
yeah. I don't know. It's I guess it's all about context. Yeah. Too. Right? I think that's uh, it. Seems ultimately contextual. Like everybody's going to have their own definition. I would be I would be suspicious. I think of anyone who didn't. Mm-hmm. Like there was a a great book. I've yet to read the full book, but it's uh, I went to a talk about the science of sex. It's called Come As You Are, okay. the book, which again, we can link. Oh yeah. Uh, but she was talking about context and they've done some really neat uh, experiments with rats and kind of like we're uh, stimulating different parts of the brain, right? Mm-hmm. So the front part of the brain, the back part of the brain. And the front part of the brain when it's stimulated is kind of where people, or the, the rats are like going, ooh, and they're, they're aroused and they're curious. Ooh. And the back part of the brain is the like, oh god, right? Where the rats are, are doing the, the anxious thing. So in a regular environment, so context, such as a regular lab, regular lights, regular noises, that's what happened when yeah. that was done. When the rats were put in like the rat spa, right? So it was nice and, <laughs> nice and dark, right? this nice environment. Then the front part, it was the, the arousal and the back part was stimulated and it was still the, ooh, you mm. know, the, the arousal, curious. And then you put the rat in another context, the bright lights and the... The music was at different volumes, so the rats couldn't even get used to it. And I guess they so, very specifically talked about... Is it like rat rave? <laughs> I guess. This rat was put in here. And Iggy Pop actually was the music specifically used in this experiment. Okay. So it was a very anxious environment. And so the, the front of the, the brain was stimulated and the rats did the the thing and the back the same. So it, it's huh. very contextual, right? Like It's like, hey, but you liked that yesterday. Right? Yeah, you don't like I mean, that now, or I'm making dinner. Like, get off my neck, or yeah, we stuff. we we. I wrote a blog post about that. I think two or three years ago, because um, it was one of the first ones to to go up, and it was that that notion. Like, like I sort of divvied up notions of love and intimacy, but one of the things with love is like not only like you could hypothetically establish a scale about which you love somebody if you define love as putting their needs ahead of yours, mm-hmm. which. Works just as well for romantic partners as it does for like children and yeah, and I think family that's a good and basic yeah. So, but but of love. by by doing so by a, by trying to establish a spot on that scale, um, a it would it would constantly change and it would change other people's, um, but also it changes all the time based on context, mood, how your day is going, mm-hmm. if this person is frustrating you. Like, if your kids have been pawing you all again. Time. If you if you were in a relationship with another human being, whether they're your friend or your family or your your partner, and they do not occasionally frustrate you, I just don't believe you. <laughs> like, or you might be the messiah, or a sociopath, <laughs> or that. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there, there, there was some of the feelings we sort of associate with romance. I mean. The, the media one is always, it's always jealousy. Mm. Like that sort of, that sort of, I want what other people have. Mm-hmm. Or I am, I am angry because they have something I do not. No, yeah. I, is that jealousy? I don't know if, like, I've always treated jealousy as, um, like, also bound up in the idea of loss, you know, like. The fear of loss. Uh, the fear of loss yeah. or whatever. Or the yeah. fear that something else is better, you know. So, like, it, it's, it's more than just, like, envy. Of yeah, it's, 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 a sort yeah. Of, it's a sort of angry anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing with jealousy, is jealousy is not really necessarily a feeling, per se. It's kind of the symptom of another feeling. Mm-hmm. There's something that's... There's something below jealousy. There's something below what what this really this feeling is manifesting as right so it is either a fear of losing someone or or a fear of insecurity or you know that fear of abandonment fear of insecurity those are two big ones Mm -hmm. that create jealousy um fear of inadequacy Mm -hmm. as well maybe i'm not good enough Mm -hmm. right the thing that really gets me is in our modern idea of romance maybe this is fed by the media i don't know which way it goes yeah Um, we see it a lot in media though, is that we are equating jealousy with love. 
right? Yeah, if somebody like, yeah. is not feeling like, jealous, then they don't love me. Or I'm yeah. feeling jealous because, oh, hey, I must love you because I'm feeling yeah, jealous. Yeah, becomes the notion a, of possession. Yeah, or it becomes mm-hmm. a barometer of, like, how intense the, the jealousy love is. is. Well, how intense your love is based right. on how jealous you would get. Yeah, so the, the Nick Jonas song... Uh, that's come on my radar is called Jealous, <laughs> which we will not link to. No, we're totally linking to it. <laughs> ah, you're but there is page views. <laughs> there is a line that's repeated. Uh, I turn this song off as soon as it comes on the radio in my car. It's not something I want my kids listening to. Uh, I have a right to get hellish. I still get jealous. Awesome. So yeah, the... he's saying like this. This is right because you're my girlfriend. So I have yeah. a right to get like this. I have a right to be angry because you were talking with someone else. Listen. No, you don't. Listen, you're my girlfriend. Let me explain to you briefly the concept of dibs. <laughs> All right? And of course she's hot, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. It's I, not really her fault. I actually think I pulled that line from a Fifty Shades of Grey uh, gif that I saw. As, a, <laughs> as an aside, uh, the super masculine side of me, my favorite side of that, or part of that song is, let me put on my chin music, because <laughs> like I like the idea of... Like, trying to imagine him actually getting punched in the face. Not because I want violence to be visited on him, but I can't I can't actually imagine him being in a fight and, like, being able to take the chin music, you know? as as Because, like, that's a... That's a well, my is context it? is always a boxer thing. Like, mm-hmm. Give him a little chin music is always, you know, jab the other person, you know, hitting the chin. Doesn't Nick Jonas have a black belt? I don't know. But I feel like... Why maybe, would you know that maybe, piece of information? Because I, I feel like... I feel like it was one of the... It's a, so it was on a Much Music thing year, many, many years ago. Back when Much Music played music. Um, that was and how you long. were watching like a One Direction? No, like. no. It was... But but they were talking... I, I, if I remember... If I'm remembering the context correctly, um, it, would, they, it, was, it was like the Jonas Brothers were still like... Because they were, they were, they were the, the, the sort of heirs to the Hanson throne... Yeah, he's not in One Direction, is he? He's a Jonas brother. brother. Yeah, and and they some somewhere I mentioned that one of them named Jonas. I think I am I am recalling memories from fifteen years ago, just in passing. But I remember I noted it because they mentioned that yeah, one of them one of them like intensely studies martial arts and studies Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. Um, And I I was also studying martial arts at the time. I took I I did Okinawan karate for a lot of years, and I'm like, so I feel like one of them. Like it has a lot, has a has a great deal of, of martial training, and would 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 readily engage in some chin music. Yeah, well, it could but be I'm him. I'm probably know. totally it's, wrong. It's probably just because of like the deli- delicate, pretty boy face kind of deal. I have a hard time imagining like him taking like I, I imagine him having a glass jaw. Yeah, like, fair enough. But that's only because it, you're a his, large, physically imposing man. Well, yes, and I, I'm ashamed to admit, like he's got that super high falsetto part of it. So like it just doesn't sound very masculine to me. Ouch! Yeah, yeah. that's no oh, wow. That's... I know that, that reveals that I'm not a good person, but <laughs> we kind of already knew that. I, well, I yeah, imagine. but we don't usually include it good on the podcast. Bad. Yeah, I know. I'm, ju- I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying you've got some problematic views of masculinity there, man. I yeah. told you, like I have toxic views of what it is to be a man. <laughs> we're, 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 we need to do the manly, manliness podcast at some point. <laughs> Didn't we already do that? But yeah, and no? No. what it is to be a man is a lot of unhealthy things, yeah, right? Yeah. That in this concept we have of masculinity yeah, you, and jealousy does. You have to have play power relationships, yep. possessive relationships. You have to like control. You have to fight yeah. for the, your partner. Yeah, a lot of these jealousy is a warning sign, right? If somebody mm-hmm. is acting overly jealous and overly, like they're texting you constantly when you're out or not believing where you are, or, you know, send me a picture, prove it, those kind of things. It's not, oh, he loves me so much. No, it's a control issue. And those likely also, escalate. I've part, seen it firsthand. Part of me is anyone who's not like, me, send me a picture of where you are. I'm like, seriously, check my Instagram, bitch. <laughs> if you can't figure it out from that, I have. Like, did you not see the picture of the food that I just posted? <laughs> you haven't geotagged, it doesn't count. Oh! Um, I, I've i heard, so like, not not the flip side of where jealous is, jealousy is a good thing, um, but sometimes the perception of jealousy is is, is thought of as, a, as an indicator. So like, I'm going to use just a, a, a male-female relationship of... Um, she gets really worried that he doesn't get jealous, mm. you know, and therefore maybe 
he doesn't love her because you know she goes and hangs out with other people or dances with a guy and he doesn't he doesn't seem to get jealous about it like there's really weird kind of I'm not saying this is normal I just like I no, have I heard of this as an example yes. I feel like normal is a word we want to sort of throw out in this context probably <laughs> yeah in general I mean yeah, to, yeah. One, well that's a flip side of somebody trying to make someone else jealous too that's still a power struggle well I'm not sure I, I don't think she in this my example she would necessarily try to it just it's a like, it's like wait a minute why aren't you yeah. jealous yeah, and that's why it, it's so ingrained in us that that is a marker yeah. of the depth of someone's love for you. I just like cuddles in video games. Yeah, jealousy is an interesting. <laughs> that thing. feels like a natural end to the point. <laughs> <laughs> it has been the natural end to a lot of things. Let's see you, folks. But I, I, that's part of it. I, I think, like when we talk about the contextuality of romance, is that there aren't there aren't any rules. The, the, I mean, I mean, there, there's no that in, in, in a sense, makes it hard. I mean, you, 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 you examine everything from um, medieval manuscripts on courtly love, moving forward, you know, seven centuries to, um, you know, you get the eighties and you get yeah, and, and the seventies, you have all that like this sort of um, relationship help stuff. I mean, you have that now too, but like, mm-hmm. like yeah, there was like men are from Mars, women are from Venus, the classic bullshit stuff. Yes. All the way now to to, stereotypes. to well, we have more refined stereotypes and we have more more representative stereotypes, but we also have things like pickup artist culture. Mm. Is that which, still a thing? Is that oh not dying? God, yes! Is that not Unfortunately, going away yet? it has not gone away at any point. Yeah, I see it but, sometimes at the bar. Yeah. But it's it, it, it's that notion that there is a there is a strategy, there are rules, and it is a, there there is mm-hmm. a game, and you can play it. And you, you sort of go through specific ritual motions, and then things happen. I mean, the pick the, the pickup artist culture is well, it's problematic for a lot of ways. But part of it is like it treats women like a crane game. Like no, no, if I get it just right, mm-hmm. the sex falls out. <laughs> yes, I put the kindness in, mm-hmm. and then the sex falls out. Yes, well, yeah, on a large law of averages kind of deal. If I play this game enough, I win. Yeah, and and. The, the context of winning seems terrible and yeah but I mean it's a, that sense of the that I, I think there is an there is an idea that there should be structure to romance when the fact of the matter is that not only is there no relevant structure apart from caring about each other and like I don't even want to say doing stuff together I know lots of couples that have vastly different interests Mm-hmm. And vastly different views on lots of things that have incredibly healthy relationships, um, but that that the, you have to sort of it is the sort of thing that everyone has to make up as they go along, and that is what I think is frightening about it is ter- is, is is terrifying and paralyzing in some cases because what if my rules involve an octopus <laughs> and I'm just like I put this I put this mustache on this octopus for you. Well, there's one way of getting around that. Tread softly, for I've spread my octopus under <laughs> your feet. <laughs> you know, and I think it all does kind of circle back to communication, right? Like yeah. You can't know what the rules are in your particular relationship unless you talk to the person that's in that relationship, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? If you're going to assume these rules that are in your head from whatever your socialization has been and whatever you've picked up from the media and family and friends and whatever throughout your life, whatever stuck to you, uh, a lot of it's going to be different than the person that you're with. I'm imagining now I'm imagining that that the sort of the mishmash of those, like the intricately, you know, written letter in careful calligraphy, (laughs) dear person to whom I am attracted. Also, I am British. (laughs) For those of you listening, I'm also writing on my hand. Writing in... Apparently Jim writes in British. Yeah, well, I mean, doesn't everybody? Um, anyway, I would very much like to cuddle. Do you like video games? <laughs> Sincerely, James. You should have a yes or no checkbox there, I feel, though. In the letter. Check yes or no. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to draw on it. <laughs> Fold it up and put it on your carrier pigeon. No, I, 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 I like, I like wrap it. I, I wrap it in a chain around, like, and a locket around the neck of a crow, and I have twenty-one of them that fly out 
and sort of convene in the same play. I'm basically, I romantically, I guess I'm Alan Moore. <laughs> Which, I don't know, I guess there's worse role models to have. He's got a really nice beard. I don't. So... I'm just uh, I, I dig this this no I think you're, I think Jack you're absolutely right that like like part of it is 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 communicating what you want I mean in the pre-show we talked about the idea of belonging mm-hmm. which sort of encapsulates not just constant companionship but also the security of that companionship they seem to go hand in hand mm-hmm. and yeah. the the no, the notion that like after you have a party at your house and all of your friends go home. Someone is there to help you clean up. Mm-hmm. You've got a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that that companionship, that security, mm-hmm. that belonging, the that somebody's going to be there kind of thing. Somebody's gonna bring me chicken soup when I'm feeling like crap, or mm-hmm. you know, understand that I just want to lay there or sit there, or rub your feet at the end of a long day or whatever. Yeah, I think romance really is in the little things. Yeah. Like, once we get past that kind of, I guess, more of that big showy stuff that happens more at the beginning. And again, communication. Maybe the you you both like the big showy stuff. And yeah, that is... well, I mean, that's... And the big showy stuff is always sort of more fun to plan together anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the, in the sense that then you, you can... It's like... Have you ever planned a surprise party for somebody? No, not really. I no, know. I'm terrible no, at keeping no. surprises. Yeah, it, Christmas it, it, is killing have you ever me. been to a surprise party? Yes, I understand yeah. the concept of surprise. No, parties. I don't know that you understand the concept of surprise parties, but there's always like like there's the concept of the surprise parties, and there's the actuality of surprise parties, where like someone comes in and they're either they're not particularly surprised, or or everyone has made them feel bad because they think that everybody's forgotten, and then they're in a horrible mood because well, they thought everybody's forgotten all day. Or, or just yeah, or or just. <laughs> You know, someone throws in this party and it's not really what they were looking for. Mm-hmm. Like, because it's someone else's idea of a party that they would want. Well, um, especially if someone said, I don't like surprise parties. Yes, that is a thing that happens. Um, we, we, I, uh, I don't know, about eight years ago I invented the reverse surprise party. Which is where you get the person who, for whom the party is for to plan the party and say, like, what they want to do. Mm-hmm. And you make the arrangements and then you invite everybody and you tell them it's a surprise party so they won't talk to that person <laughs> well because that way you don't get that that person doesn't get everybody's cancellations mm. like that's the the problem with trying to plan a party like that is you always you all you really hear about until the day of is all the people who aren't coming yes and so they don't get any of that because nobody's especially talks to them in this day it. and age yeah that's a whole other podcast yeah the, the the facebook rsvp the rsvps to oh the... yeah but uh, yeah, or just our lack of commitment. I think these days, mm-hmm. saying we're going to be somewhere. It's really easy to say maybe, yeah. say maybe, or even say yes, and then, and then at just the eleventh hour, up. there's an excuse or not turn up yeah, or whatever. I just didn't feel like it. Sorry, Mad but, Men was just released on Netflix. Yeah, I was mainlining House of Cards. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like there's there's this this is like the, the the what makes the reverse surprise party so fun is that that person does get what they want <laughs> because the planner and the person for whom the party is for work together on it. Mm-hmm. And even if nobody, I mean, they're, they're, it's a reverse surprise because everybody jumps out and yells surprise and the other person, and, 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 and the surprisee is actually like, guess what? I knew about this the whole time. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, it, 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 it turns it all around, but it, it also sort of creates a lower pressure atmosphere and it makes sure that everybody gets what they want because everybody mm-hmm. who came gets the same party no matter what mm-hmm. and they have a good time. And it seems like planning your sort of cake events is like that. Although sometimes surprises are nice. Well, yeah, and I think part of romance, too, is really listening to what your partner's ha- partner has said. Mm-hmm. And remembering those little details mm-hmm. that maybe you were in a little bookshop a year ago or something and they mentioned a certain author that they like and a new book just came out, so you bought that book for them. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Ryan has an entire notebook full of that stuff. In fact, I know you do. (laughs) So, yes and no. 
for our, for our first anniversary, I I for a year kept a list of like my favorite moments, mm-hmm. and then I wrote them each on like like I bought a moleskin, and then on each page, so I I collected like I don't know a hundred or something favorite moments, mm-hmm. and then I wrote them on there, and then I tried to like do a little doodle to represent it. Oh, well. so there's yeah, that. So it was I, super I've, sweet. I've done I that. remember when he was working right. on it. I've done that, but then there's also been the times where like I got Sarah's favorite coffee order wrong for like a year and a half and she never corrected me Mm -hmm. and so finally when we were having an argument about something and this happened to come up because like i it was the the context of the argument was that i I just wasn't listening or i wasn't i wasn't considering her and so she brought up the example of the coffee and i had always gotten her a caramel soy latte i believe it was it's okay no no i got her i think i got her a caramel macchiato latte i like that and she <laughs> liked it too she never complained but she goes no i just would like a caramel soy latte <laughs> and in my mind because i'm i don't know anything about starbucks if you as we like, like, it's not to our previous our, our previous link, link over ryan's face no, i know nothing about starbucks um if i was just like you never you never corrected me and how was i supposed to know but it was the idea that you know i just I never paid attention when she made the orders or I, you know, I just assumed I knew what she wanted without actually listening to what she was telling me. So I think it would be different if she corrected you every time and you consistently kept getting it wrong. Well, I'm pretty sure if we were to ask her, she would give lots of examples of things that she consistently corrects me I am a hundred percent sure of that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm one day, one day we will have Sarah on the podcast. I think think there are things that are important and things that aren't important Mm -hmm. and, like, I couldn't tell you what Gord really likes on his hot dog. I could make an educated guess. Bacon. But. <laughs> no, it's just because Sarah asked me, what do you want on your hot dog? I'm like, doesn't matter. I'll just eat a plane. And she's like, what do you think? She gets so frustrated <laughs> because I won't give her a straight answer because I honestly don't care. And so no, far, I'm just no, like, no more. We're going to get Sarah on the podcast. Mu- <laughs> I just like, this season, mustard, mustard. Happen. She goes, see, was that so hard? I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel oh, like man. relish. <laughs> So there okay. isn't a consistent hot dog order sometimes. Yeah. There's no reason that the hot dog order should always be consistent. I'm a very capricious person. And I imagine there's a lot of people who have very capricious like desires and tastes. So, in my defense. And find out what's important. <laughs> well, I mean, that's... Well, there's that's... the whole love languages thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yep. is it getting shown that you're loved because they do things for you or they tell you that they love you or whatever so it's periodic tickling and sarcasm (laughs) i don't think those were covered i have that i have a copy of that book and i don't think (laughs) periodic tickling falls into a love language but sarcasm like we're good on the sarcasm right i'm learning so much (laughs) but i think we will bring it to an end there Oh, do you have any final thoughts? Communication. That's really all. <laughs> Jackie is our ex- Jackie is our expert on this. Communication. If you for the love. If you're frustrated and you feel like you're communicating, you might not be. There is there is communicating too much sometimes, but yes. Yeah. For the love of cheese, talk to people. Mm. <laughs> yeah, don't ju- don't assume that just because you've been thinking about it for days on end, and then all of a sudden you bring it up. That there's the full understanding is going to be there. Telepathy is my favorite way to communicate romantic <laughs> thoughts. Thank you, Ryan. I, uh, I've been thinking about getting an antenna to strengthen the. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's obviously not working. So what I need is an antenna. <laughs> need a need a signal boost. Yeah, like rabbit ears or something. Oh dear. Anyway, we digress. I'm Jim and I'm Ryan. Jackie. And this is the Concept Crucible podcast, and we're signing off. Stay romantic. Ooh. Oh, Ryan, my butt! The outros. I know. My butt. It's is gonna be like sore and flat.